There's hardly been a better time to construct a budget gaming PC than right now, as GPU prices are finally quickly falling, while SSD, RAM, at least DDR4 RAM, and power supplies remain affordable. You can build a reliable gaming computer that is capable of 1080p gaming for less than $500, and it can come with both discrete graphics and a 12th gen Intel processor. You're probably curious how we do it, so make sure to stay tuned. It's possible to have just as much fun customizing a low-cost gaming computer as you would a high-end behemoth. It can be just as powerful if you're careful with the components you buy. This video is going to explain what you need to construct the finest PC under $500. And if you're willing to change the setting just a little bit, you can play just about anything at 1080p on this PC. Because pre-built systems can cost hundreds of dollars, if not thousands, due to the knowledge and quality control of the system builders, you also need to assemble the PC yourself. However, you shouldn't let that scare you. Making your own PC is not as difficult as you may think, and it's something that everybody can do. Okay, let's get started. The central processing unit of our gaming computer that's going to cost less than $500 is going to begin with the Intel Core i3-12100F, and the graphics card is going to be powered by the AMD Radeon RX 6400. Intel's Core i3-12100 is the best and most affordable central processing unit available right now. It's got four performance cores and a boost clock speed of 4.3 GHz. The i3-1200F is a variant of the Core i3-12100 that doesn't come with integrated graphics. We don't actually need that. Tom's hardware subjected the Intel Core i3-12100 processor to a variety of tests, and what they found out is that a single-thread performance, which is the type that matters the most for gaming, was superior to that of processors that cost double as much, like the Ryzen 5 5600X and Intel's previous generation Core i5-11600K. You don't really need to be spending a ton of extra cash on a CPU cooler because the i3-12100F has a cooler already installed in the package. If you want to create a PC for $500, then your best bet is to get a Radeon RX 6400. Now, this isn't because it's one of the greatest graphics cards, but rather because it's the cheapest GPU available that belongs to the current generation, and even though the RX 6400 isn't lightning quick, it's still fast enough to play AAA games without stuttering. We went with the RX 6400, so that way you could build a gaming PC for less than 500 but if you can get an extra $20 in your budget, the far faster Radeon RX 6500 XT is available for as little as $180. It is 30% quicker and a considerable bit better buy than the RX 6400. The 6500 XT GPU comes with 1,024 GPU cores, but the 6400 GPU only has 768. Plus, the VRAM operates at 18 gigabits per second, which is twice as fast as the 6400 16. Both GPUs have a boost clock speed of 2.8 gigahertz and 4 gigabytes of VRAM. We are going to require a low-cost motherboard here and go with the LGA1700 socket so that way the 12th generation Intel CPU can function adequately. For about $90, you can purchase Intel's H610, which is the lowest chipset with a socket that is the best performance at this level. This is a very simple motherboard, as it's only got two slots for RAM and one slot that can accommodate an M.2 PCI Gen 3 storage device. For under $500, the Team Group MP33 with a capacity of 512GB should be your first pick for a storage device. The performance that you get for your money with the Team Group MP33 is absolutely awe-inspiring, and the price for this product is much more reasonable now than it was back then. The sequential read-write speeds of this SSD are advertised at 1,700 and 1,400 Mbps, respectively which is approximately three times fast as what you would get from a traditional SATA SSD. To stay with the $500 price point, you're also going to need to stick with a modest 8GB of RAM in the form of two 4GB DDR4 3200s. If by chance that you're willing to spend an additional $15 to $20, you're going to be able to acquire 16GB of RAM because the team group's T-Force Zeus DDR4-3200 RAM is a 2 8GB kit that can be purchased for just $50 bucks right now. Because the motherboard only has two slots for RAM, it's in your best interest to shout out a little additional money now rather than upgrading in the future. 
The Corsair Carbide 175R, which is about 40 bucks, would be an excellent choice for a case in your low-cost personal computer. In addition to enticing and understated appearance, this chassis features a tempered glass side panel, an RGB logo, and an RGB exhaust fan that comes pre-installed. Given that Corsair is one of the most well-known companies in the computer cases, the overall quality of this product is excellent considering the cost. However, if you don't like rebates or if this product's no longer available on sale by the time you watch this, then you can find a $45 to $50 case in the form of Roswell's FBMX2 or FBMX1. The latter isn't particularly attractive. The power supply we're going to get is from Thermalake, with 430 watts of capacity in the final component required to build your PC for less than 500. Any power supply ranging from 400 to 500 watts from any reputable brand will basically do the trick here. The Thermalake Smart 430 watt is 80 plus certified, however, it's neither bronze nor gold certified, which indicates that it takes some degree of efficiency considerations into account. Changing the RAM, GPU, and storage for slightly better components is definitely something that we recommend doing if you're able to push your budget just a bit further, which may mean an increase of anywhere from $20 to $80. Because the motherboard only has two DIMM slots, our number one priority is upgrading the amount of RAM from 8 to 16 gigabytes. And if you want to simplify all areas of your computing life, including online browsing, document writing, and gaming, upgrading to Team Group's $48 16GB to 8GB kit will only set you back less than 20 bucks. Investing an additional $20 to jump up to a Radeon RX 6500 XT from an RX 6400 is another decision that needs to be made though, even though it could be tough. You get roughly though 30% better performance out of it for a minimal additional investment. Gaming PC under $400 Let's say you're even more strapped for cash and only have a $400 limit. You're not going to be able to get a graphics card in this because you need an additionally priced central CPU with good integrated graphics in order to cut the cost. The CPU that we recommend here is going to be the AMD Ryzen 5 5600G. The central processing unit costs $160 and only consumes 65 watts of power. It comes with 6 cores, 12 threads, and a maximum boost efficiency of 4.4 GHz. Additionally, the cooler is included with the package, saving you the expense of purchasing a separate one. The integrated RX7 Vega GPU that comes with the Ryzen 5 5600G is, maybe more crucially, capable of playing games quite effectively at 720p and at least passable at 1080p. The MOBO that we are sticking with on this one is going to be the ASRock B450M HDV R4.0, as it's one of the most affordable and reliable motherboards at the low end price point, which will help keep your limit under that $400. It's essential to keep in mind here that due to the fact that the B450 chipset is somewhat older than the Ryzen 5000 series of CPUs, not all B450 motherboards will operate with the 5600G right out of the box. Because HDOX motherboard only has two DIMM slots, keep in mind that if you do go with the 8 gigabytes of RAM, you're not going to be able to upgrade without changing the memory. This is something to keep in mind when making your decision. The B450, on the other hand, has other fundamental characteristics in addition to this constraint, one of those being that it has support for the M.2 SSD. The chassis, RAM, storage, and power supplies are all identical to those found on our gaming PC for 500. This implies that we're only going to be using 8 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 RAM, a tiny 512 gigabyte SSD, and 430 watt power supply. You can switch out any of these components with different versions with comparable specifications. So there you have it. That's how you can get a gaming PC for under $500. If you enjoyed this video, then please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the channel if you want more content just like this, and don't forget to ding that notification bell so you don't miss out on any more content updates from us. Until next time, folks, stay safe and stay informed.